And boom, and boom, we are live. Welcome everybody to a uh, uh, just another like edition of Push the Talk. Sex dungeon. And, and apparently, Dawn is dealing with her sex dungeon. Sex dungeon. An episode okay. of Push the Talk, McLeod. Say what now? Did McLeod die? I think McLeod died. Oh, know. there we go. There we go. Sorry, my like my my issue. OBS kind of like controls my push talk for some you know some obvious reason or unobvious we, we, reason. We I'm not entirely certain. That's probably one of the reasons why I actually use voice active. Eve technical difficulty. Yeah, we we, yes. we have found the unicorn that uses push to talk on the push to talk show. Um, hello everyone. How are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> doing fine. Hope everyone's well. good. I'm I'm doing okay. We're we're here. We're gonna talk about FarmFest at some point. But um in the meantime we have the obligatory uh dawn rule segment, which means that we can't talk about Eve Online for the next uh twenty minutes. Um so how how are people doing? Do we wanna talk about food isn't, or isn't real life? Obvious, like what's what's going on? Isn't there an obvious question first? Yeah, there's it's always an obvious talking, question. It's talking about FanFest actually talking about eve so does that you know come under that rule a, or after, this year after this year probably not there's there's no real eve online to talk about <laughs> i mean oh. we, we can talk about fanfest adjacent stuff like you know any everything that happens at fanfest that doesn't have anything to do with eve so you want to talk about oh, the laundromat fanfest. reopening oh yeah yeah we could do that I mean that that would fit into the food segment, right? Uh, it would, yeah. The the laundromat being the the biggest place in uh, Reykjavik for sandwiches and breakfast for eat for like drunk and hungover Eve Online players. Um, this is true. Yeah, I did want to actually say. Uh, oh yeah. Um, uh, it seems I have to explain why I'm sitting in the dark. Uh, yeah, you are not... kind of in the dark. Yeah, uh, the the issue is that um th there's there's the sun behind me. You see, ah right, okay. so it's very bright behind me. The sun does the sun does make everything dark? Yes. Um, <laughs> she dies in there for a bit as well, you know. And I uh, is in Twitch chat asking if the the laundromat stuff is happening at the same place as before. Yes, it is the same place as before. Like they closed down uh, pre pandemic for a couple of reasons, but uh, I understand that they are back in the same place. With the same quality of food and everything, um, so go have fun if you are in Iceland, which everyone on the show evidently is not in Iceland. I, I do want to point out they couldn't do the laundromat as an as an annual thing where they only open when there's fan fest. I, I think you could actually sell that as a business plan. Mm. Um, well, well, it, it, you'd have to have a business plan for what you're going to do with the rest of the year, but like. Um, using the premises for a cafe bar just for FanFest might have some some value in in Iceland. Well, so you don't have to salary and 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 rent uh, in the same model for the rest of the year. Like right? it's a special so, pop up shop like ice cream in summer. You, you'd still have rents, but like the the salary stuff is a very good point. You know, doing a pop up sandwich shop for FanFest would be. Cool, and actually something that CCP would probably support as well. Oh, can you imagine if they did that as an actual thing, where every time there was FanFest, all these pop-up shops with food stuff and carts and coffee things just surrounding the Harper, so we would just go out and just sample all manner of weird uh, takeaway? That would be awesome. Yeah, I mean... I believe I, the term you're looking for is international cuisine. I, I have a... <laughs> I have a very serious question for you, though, Caleb. Like, is that worth five extra US dollars a month? <laughs> no. well, not, well, is, has there been a price hike for something? No, surely not. No, no, nobody would want to change the price of EVE Online, right? I mean... No, that's, like, been the same for, like, almost two decades. If you're in the US. If yeah, you're if you're in the US. US. Yeah. <laughs> I, I know at least in the UK that like I've had two price hikes within the last what 
five, ten years, five years. We we, we like got that. a price hike late twenty twenty in the UK. Um, yeah, and there was also the happened. there was also a. I mean, you know, uh, uh, maybe not price hike, but a price change when uh, um, CCP Unifex was uh, um, executive producer because uh, he he set the at least the UK price for uh, uh, a month of uh, Omega yeah. to nine ninety nine, right? Yeah, and that's like not unreasonable. The the, the no, occasional change to price hikes. To, to I, I say the occasional change to price hikes. Well, um, the occasional change to pricing is <laughs> kind of expected when you have a product that's also a subscription based product. But um, I mean, you, you have to get you, you have to get value from the product that you're you're talking about, right? And yeah, I know. I also note that we're five minutes into the show and already ignoring the Dawn rules, so maybe we should just play. Like, <laughs> no, right we're, now we're talking about sandwich prices. We, oh, we'll yeah, of course. Idea. Sorry, my bad. I mean, um, Unifex I mean, did did say that the sandwich price in in the UK should be nine ninety nine. I thought that was quite high. It, it, that that's a lot for a sandwich. Um, <laughs> yeah, you know, what, what, what's your preferred flavor of sandwich? Though, so, like, let's go around the room. Preferred sandwich styles, guys. Uh, Orendus? I like a nice Italian hero. How oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, okay. I, I have a vague idea what that is. Um, are we going uh, cold cuts or are we hot sandwiches? Or <laughs> Either one. What's, whoa, 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 what's the whoa. classification we're sticking to? <laughs> it's, it, 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 is it a sandwich? If yes, then you can claim it. Um, yeah, but you're, I mean... you're jumping in ahead of Caleb there, <laughs> Dawn, and I don't appreciate that. Oh. Well, that's fine, because you have to remember when you ask about sandwiches, in my case, they have to be open, so I can wait. You wait, you wait, so, so, so mean... Caleb, has, Caleb has sandwiches without bread. Um, it's no, just they're just there. one piece of bread, and then the topping uh, on that, and no bread on top. In other words, so, so if you if you if you sandwich. Would you call a panini a sandwich? It's got bread. I, I, I'd right? call a panini a sandwich. It's oh, are yeah. Going, are we going sandwich wars already? But, but no, but you, you have a panini yeah, press, so it can be like quite hot, right? So I'm just thinking, it, a, like, if it, if you if you sandwich. if you're having a toasted hot sandwich that is, you know, uh, uh you know, um, an open sandwich that Caleb was talking about. I'm just gonna, I'm sure, just gonna warn you sure, before we get surely, to Soth, because Soth is gonna insist that hot dogs are sandwich then. I was just going to say, because surely a pizza is technically a sandwich in this regard. Come on! Uh, uh, what, Why pizza would a pizza be a sandwich? sandwich? Because it's an open, hot, you know, sandwich with bread, and then... Yeah, it's, no, it's bread, no, well, it's, it's, it's no, kind it's of bread. Really bread. It's, it's, it's not really bread, it's crust. It's a pie. <laughs> yeah, wait, wait a minute! Wait a minute! McLeod is from the UK. I'm uh, pretty sure that, that pies are like closed and have a lid, right? Yeah, yeah, yes. they have a pastry lid. So you're they, wrong. They, it's not really it's an open top pie. By pie doesn't need to be closed. That, that yes, it no, does. A, 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 an open top pizza. pie is called a pizza. Is, a pizza is closed as well um, by the cheese. No, what? no, cheese is now a lid. <laughs> it, 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 cheese is now apparently bread of some sort. Like, well, well, welcome to Push the Talk, where we don't talk about E for twenty minutes on the show. And, <laughs> and, and, and where our culinary oh, discussions go really exotic. And an, an open top pie is actually called a quiche. That's it. That's no, the end of the no, a quiche. Okay. A quiche. A quiche is an egg pie. Oh, so fucking funny. This is where the the the, the Atlantic uh, thing becomes an issue because things in the normal world and things in US are not the same. I mean, if you guys thought that like the the real kind of like uh, heated discussion when it comes to cuisine is pineapple or not pineapple on a pizza, like we're we're basically showcasing you that there is a lot more conversations around cuisine that you could have. Okay. Look, Caleb. To the, Caleb. The details oh, matter. Hang, hang on a second, okay. guys. It, they hang do. On. I just want to make this point. I just want to make this point really quick, Caleb. Before you start talking about you know the real world and then the U.S., just remember, if not for us, everyone on this show would be speaking some form of Germanic language. Well, that's, that, well, that's harsh. Speaking, like English, you mean? I, I'm pretty that's sure the that point. the language you're speaking <laughs> is kind of similar to Germanic as well. It is. 
it's it it's really even is. worse. It's 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 ninety percent uh, old Norse. Yes, right? very good, Caleb. <laughs> I'm uh, helping I, the audience. I know everyone. I don't think the audience needs aware. help. Um, they're fine. They're right fine, dude. Um, I'm looking at Twitch chat real quick, and uh, uh, apparently we're going downhill and are sponsored by CCP. Uh, Bad Blood Studios is, is having fun with that one. Well, but, I mean, if um, we're sponsored by CCP, we're fine in terms of currency and money, so like we're good. <laughs> but, we but don't need. We don't need to monetize. <sighs> we would be speaking Icelandic. Uh, yeah, Teodorant suggesting that we'd be speaking Icelandic. Why would no. we, we? We might actually have more dev interaction if we were speaking Icelandic. <laughs> well, we would know what we they were about. The... Sorry. Okay. Someone should, someone should remind the Icelandic people when it comes to the language that the rest of the world has actually evolved and they're still stuck like a thousand years in the past. I was I was going to say if we want if we want to try and get some of that some of that Icelandic sponsorship money, um, Caleb, I need you to get drunk and start slurring your Danish. You think <laughs> that's going to sound Icelandic enough? Slurring his it's Danish, but Danish yes. is already slurring your Swedish. Yeah, I was about to say that the, I think it would be better if we got Wibbler to get blind drunk and and slur his Norwegian. That would be closer. Um, actually, when I get semi drunk, I can kind of understand Icelandic, and then when I get really fucking shit faced, I can actually understand Danish. I I, I, I was pretty sure Wibble's already drunk enough. I wouldn't have known. Like um, I, I I'm, I'm trying to catch up to Dirk, and it's it's a bit of a slog. That's a fucking race that's gonna kill you. I, I know there's the joke of um, if you want to talk Danish, you just put a hot potato in your mouth. Um, but how does that work the other way around if you want to understand Danish? What do you, you put a hot potato in your ear? You, 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 you take you it take the potato the ear, out of your mouth. <laughs> you get to smile another lot until you actually figure it out. You can take a uh, while. All right. But to you, Wibbler, isn't that like almost like a pickup line? That's like your strategy, right? Just nod a lot. I don't know about that. I would like to point out the elephant in the room that yes, and people who saw the the ping, yes, we do have a, a, a Wibbler in the chat. Well, not even in the chat, in the actual show. What am I talking a about? Wibbler in the wild. Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, I decided to drop FanFest this year for obvious reasons, and I figured I would rather hang up with you guys and talk mad shit about not Eve things at FanFest. In other words, poor life choices were made all around. <laughs> <laughs> Poor life choices are also uh, are always being made. Um, that said, Wibbler, you are going to be with us in Berlin. Oh yeah! Oh hell yeah! And just for any goons in the chat, Berlin is apparently shaping up to be the the fan fest equivalent. Um, I've I've managed to identify about a dozen people who went to Iceland for fan fest, compared to the nearly seventy people who have decided that Berlin is a thing. Should like, we start damn. doing act actual advertising and, and, and artwork and stuff? Because I really like the naming that Arendis gave the, the trip. I I don't want to do artwork and what was uh, that name? organizing because the Alvida scene. <laughs> Oof. <laughs> yeah, that's not. Right, right. Yeah, like... <laughs> But Berlin is already so oversubscribed that we'll break bars when we go there. Um, it's... I mean, but that, but that's the Goon Swarm way. <laughs> it's yeah, going to be such that, a, yeah. it's going to be such a fun time. But holy shit, I'm not sure that we want to like make we, it more we, official. Like, like this, rush Germany. <laughs> I mean, there, there's the anecdote of what happened at one of the uh, the Vegases, right, where you guys like basically. Almost drank a bar out of business. <laughs> we literally did drink a bar without to run out of a certain type of alcohol because we all kept ordering the same drink. They had to go to Damn. the other. They had to go to the other bars in the casino to get more of it so they could keep going. What did you buy? Do you blue balls. <laughs> God. Oh, that kind of. Yeah, thing. Weird, that, creamy blue drink. It's a, it's a it weird. A, cocktail. But it was good. Yeah. 
Yeah, are you yeah, talking about post fuel? Oh, yeah, I just check. Oh, yeah, I'm gonna have to make that. I don't know if it was I'm like delicious. if it had gin in it or something, but because normally there's I don't like no, gin, but there's no gin in this. Okay. There, there's a lot of gin in Wibbler, but there's no gin in that drink. <laughs> um, we, we, uh, we, we still uh, don't know what your your favorite sandwiches are. Just go for yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, that, that's a fair point. We, we kind of got <laughs> sidetracked. Um, okay, so well, uh, uh, it's, us, it's, it's, us getting sidetracked. What? <laughs> Never. Never. Happens. That's a feature, not a bug. Um, <laughs> so, so, so yeah, uh, Dawn, what's your favorite sandwich? Well, um, I think I really enjoy any sort of meatball sub, but. Um, a Western burger is probably, if I had it, like if it was a restaurant, it would either be oh. like a really good fried chicken sandwich or a Western burger. So, so what you're saying is that your favorite sandwich is actually a burger. You said I, mean, I asked hot it, it does work. It does work. That's fair enough. A burger is a sandwich. Um, it's true. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Oh, damn. Uh, yeah, that's a good point. Let, let, that's why I was like, do we want to limit this? So I know, like, you know, easy <laughs> well, time, but that. no. I would absolutely love any sort of like a uh, fried chicken sandwich, you know, with sauces or something on it, or a burger, like a, a but a Western burger, not just a plain burger, ah. like barbecue sauce and cheese and onions and stuff. Um, South or Sil, what's your favorite sandwich? Uh, a prawn, uh, like prawn a on a on a nice bread roll. <laughs> shrimp, shrimp, oh boy, <laughs> you, 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 yeah, yeah, uh, okay. Shrimp, you, you want a right? seafood sandwich? Okay, yes, that's, that's okay. We, I mean, can... I, I, I I live at the coast, right? We can understand that. Um, Mac, favorite sandwich? It's kind of difficult because, like, you know, you guys <laughs> like readjusted what a sound like what a sandwich should be, but like, I don't know. I was just kind of thinking a good like a decent BLT is actually, actually fantastic. Like with the emphasis oh, on the with the emphasis on the uh, on the tea on in actual fact like that, that, having a really good tomato tomatoes, tomatoes in like a BLT is like really fucking good yeah you want to get like really some nice chunky kind of um, like beef tomatoes like, like quite beef thick tomatoes exactly yeah. yeah thick big really like decent slices everyone heard it here first jerks like big thick tomatoes yep. Yep. um yeah he likes I, I was... he he likes it beefy i uh, i was actually Oops, saving yeah. one until last but mcleod kind of <laughs> Did I, did, did so, I... Yeah, I've got to say that a BLT is 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 there for me too. It's it's pretty fucking great, especially with proper bacon. Um, yeah, th with none of this streaky shit that you US Whatever guys you're... have an idea about, like proper <laughs> back bacon with some substance. Do we want that wall right now? Uh... <laughs> <laughs> of all, all of the wars, wall right now. Of all, no, we not this wall. Oh. <laughs> So wib wibbler, favorite sandwich. Yeah. Yeah. Um, whatever I ordered at Nonny's Lost or the Lolly's Bomba is also quite good. You're gonna have to explain that. Yeah, yeah well, last time I had it, I was so drunk I couldn't see, so no, I'm not gonna explain that. Yeah, I've been that drunk. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. I was at Vegas the first night, uh, like I think my Friday night maybe. Uh, we were so drunk. It was only nine o'clock. So drunk that I couldn't not be cross-eyed. I was completely aware of everything that's going on. Walk around just fine, but my eyes were just like, "You're gonna be cross-eyed," and I'm like, "I can't read shit." Like I, if I had a sobriety test, I would have failed just because like my eyes were just like locked, stuck, oh. cross-eyed for an hour and a half. I, uh, I have to drop. I have to drop. Friday is not the first night in Vegas. I, Wednesday I is the first night in Vegas. I, it might have been Thursday night. I don't remember. I know I got in on Thursday night. That's right. But yeah, like, so like Wednesday, I Wednesday is the new Friday. Friday. In Vegas, uh, every I've day never... is the not the new Friday. Well, no, because it's going back to Friday, Dirk. Um, but there's a there's a thing in Twitch chat that suggests that we can't let tacos in. Uh, this is push to talk. We can do whatever the fuck we want. Thank you very oh, much. Oh fuck tacos! Oh no, about, that that makes that changes everything. Up, oh wait, oh wait, gyros are also really fucking good when you're drunk. Do we also include like shawarma? I, I think we have to. I think maybe. We have to. Yeah, I'm, I'm okay with that. This is when getting complicated. Sandwich, when you said sandwich and I asked cold cuts are hot, you were like, any, and I'm like, all right. Uh, be prepared. Did, yeah. 
the right. thing that really got me was Caleb's open sandwich. But I, I, I've actually uh, up, upgraded that one uh, just uh, for Soth, right? I think I'm going to go for mine being uh, beef parisienne, which is basically like a patty on top of toast with uh, a lot of garnish stuff, which is like... Uh, pickles and uh, raw onions and uh, pickled beetroots and capers and a raw egg yolk. Uh, it is amazing. And it classifies as a sandwich because it's basically something on a piece of bread. Hey, Caleb was literally like describing a burger to us and like that was not a, burger. a fancy oh, beef oh. Parisienne. I just have to interrupt this uh, transition. Uh, kebabs are also great. And especially as Me Too mentioned, uh, a swinging kebab when you're drunk. Is fucking um, perfect. That's also in Bergen, by the way. No, but no. Technically, if you wrap, discussion? if you wrap something in in something dough or bread based, does that make it a sandwich? I I, I guess under our current definition, yes. But um, wow, I do that just makes a say, lot of Mexican food all sandwiches. <laughs> I I, I, I do I, I do just want to say like kebabs are for drunken feed me moments and not nothing else. Well, yes, and also for spilling off it on the uh, the helicopter deck of my old friend, which I did at least twice. Uh, so we can actually show you what a good kebab is like when when you're in Berlin, like oh, one you can oh, enjoy oh. while being sober. Oh, if, if, if you if you oh, can oh, give me a kebab donor. that I can enjoy sober, I will be impressed. Well, I don't I don't think that's hard. Like, no, Berlin is well, the no city proper where the, donor shouldn't be hard. Berlin is just like the, the <laughs> fucking capital of good sober kebab. Yeah, and it's, it's, it's where the, the doner kebab was, was invented, right? Mm, that's so good. This is this is going to go badly already. And Well, I'm, I was just kind of wondering. It's to go badly from the start <laughs> anyway. I was just kind of wondering, because I was going to like tie this into, uh, into the show a little bit more, but... Uh, Especially since how we're, you know, almost at the 30-minute mark? Exactly. Um, how many of these, uh, you know, fantastic sandwich suggestions do you think are actually available in Iceland right now? Uh, 30, I'm going to go with 30%. 10% maybe. <laughs> if you're lucky. I'm sure there's there a lot of good sandwich sure. places, but I'm going to go with 30%. I'm pretty sure you can get prawns over there. But... I mean, it, I'm reasonably sure you can get a few of these, yeah. Their, their biggest industry is fishing. I'd be surprised if they can't get prawns. <laughs> yeah. You yeah. would be surprised. I'm going to have to find myself a fucking kebab tonight. Oh, dear it's lord, we've already sport. corrupted Wibbler. Yep. <laughs> Sorry about that, Wib. Do, do well, you know, though, what the second biggest industry in Iceland is? Um, it's probably CTV, given the way that they keep... Nope. Yeah, you know, nope. staying it's, in Iceland. It's our uh, aluminium smeltering. Oh, yeah. What? Oh, I would yeah. not it's, have expected that. Because they have very cheap electrical power, power, right? And you need a lot oh, of yeah. that for aluminium. I'm, I'm yeah, sorry, from what? geothermal. Uh, yeah, Arenas and I are over here going, what? What is oh, this weird... Yeah, yeah, yeah cool. sorry. So for for, for the, the Americans in, in chat... Um, Aluminum smelter. Ah, ah. <laughs> oh, oh, you mean you mean the accurate term the metal was originally given? <laughs> oh God, yeah, here we go again. He's going down oh, that path. You spell spelling error. But it's spelled the same. What are you talking about? Look, the accurate one is the one that the English person said. Okay. That's not accurate. Yes, it is. It's absolutely accurate. Um, you know how you can tell it's not accurate? The same way, Dawn. You can tell it's accurate because the cats are even disagreeing with you, Dawn. <laughs> no, yeah. You can tell it's not. You can you can tell that one isn't accurate because an Englishman said it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they don't know how to pronounce. And, and an Englishman said a word in English, but is apparently wrong. That that yep. that that's what we just heard here, guys and girls. Um, thank you. That's Rachel. absolutely it's true. Englishman and I can, trying to uh, and pronounce I can Greek prove or it, Latin. Sir. I, I couldn't make head or tails of that. Uh, remind me how it's pronounced <laughs> in Greek. <laughs> but it's not. Because it's not. Greek. I'm just. It's I'm just saying. I'm, I'm just saying. Dawn's cat was right on cue there. Yep, that yeah. really was right on cue. She always is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, Dawn, Dawn says wow. a word, and the cat gets involved. Um. 
Look, Dirk, but here's the, the book, here's yeah. how here's how you know the English person had it wrong. They added an I, not a U. It's true. It, it has enough U's already. That's not my problem. Um, that said, uh, I I will use this as a blatant shoehorn segue. We are twenty eight minutes into the show. Do we want to talk about some Eve stuff? We should. We yes. probably should. Um. All right. So if we want to talk about some Eve stuff, here's a here's a serious question. The fuck is that to talk about? I'm Where wondering is our biggest what... announcement ever. I'm, I'm wondering if Dawn is actually alive or whether she's just been killed by a cat. Yeah, she's fine. Well, I mean, this was, this was without a doubt the largest announcement of content release in Eve's history. <laughs> we saw it. We saw it during the keynote. No, sorry, during the opening ceremonies. Okay. All right. Yeah, yeah. I, uh, <clears> we absolutely did. Justification. We absolutely did. Hilmar openly went and announced the unannounced FPS, which is still unannounced. Therefore, all of the content that wasn't announced was announced. <laughs> In not making uh, sense, I mean, that almost makes sense. <laughs> yeah. It's just science. <laughs> so, so what you're saying is that the FPS was, like, the big thing. I, I'm no, glad we had a no, horrendous here to... Announced. I'm glad we had Arendus oh, 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 here. Sorry. Yeah. To science the shit out of it. Yeah, but the, sometimes the when Arendus talks like this, we, we need flowcharts to, to actually about. follow his thinking. But what? <laughs> well, sometimes with the convoluted thinking of Arendus, we need flowcharts. That wasn't. It wasn't uh, convoluted. Dimensional flowcharts. Uh, if the I'm, thing, I'm not if breaking. The thing that was talked about was unannounced. The thing that the things that weren't talked about were clearly announced. It's very simple. Do we have a segment where, like, you're just like how you're next to like a, a big whiteboard, but just like sort of showcasing like how this shit works, uh, like the big stick? I'd, I'd support that. I do not need to be with, Thank a, you. with a blackboard and everything. <laughs> Come on, let's do it, people. Uh, Arendus I, does words. I do not need to be Glenn Beck. <laughs> By the way, our chat is currently um, making the point that a flowchart is a sandwich. Jack so... can fuck off, a flowchart doesn't have bread. It could. Does it? <laughs> I mean, it could. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, I've made a decision. A flowchart doesn't have bread, therefore it's not a sandwich. Now I feel inclined to actually make a flowchart out of bread. Alright, I'm, I'm going to be that guy, I'm going to go there. Alright, Dirk? Two hot blondes with a dude in the middle that doesn't have any bread either, but that's a fucking sandwich. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> now we just we just need chat to start uh, asking for sauce. Uh, <laughs> well, 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 we kind of broke that, didn't we? Um, Disgusting. Thanks, please. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but no. well, anyways, I, I was more on the page of, of they had promised us these big announcements, and of course, coming out of the war, that was very reminiscent of something about big promises and stuff. Mm. Um, and well, that's basically where we, we went, right? It was gonna be big, didn't really show anything big. But, but Caleb, um, ever, everything new that comes to Eve is gonna come via the medium of storyline. Faction Warfare. Are you not hyped for changes to Faction Warfare? I, I actually am pretty stoked about the, the Faction Warfare changes. I think Faction Warfare has, has needed these changes for a long time. Faction well, Warfare uh, needed changes a lot longer ago than they've done. I'm them. gonna double down on the positive there, because the whole thing with ARC and the way of shipping uh, things even more in, in, inside the game, I think is actually really, really good. Uh, I like that. Uh, I like that they are really like ramping that thing up because it's been in the background a bit in the past, right? With the, the teasers in the storylines and stuff where it was very obscure and only for people like Ashtarothi and, and that crowd. The fact that they're putting it front and center, I think it's actually a very, very good move. I, I got to say, though, um, I, I did enjoy uh, CCPO Rose's presentation 
but it feels very weird to spearhead your your fan first with something that's going to go into the design phase next week. But who's going to design it? <laughs> Aurora. <laughs> it's going it, 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 to be designed by committee. Well, no, clearly it's going to be designed by CCP Rattati. Oh, yeah, good point. Just like VAT. Only if it... No, 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 no. Whoa, 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 if whoa. it works. We, oh, we, we no. have to be... We, we have to be very clear about the AT statement. Um, the person who got on stage and claimed to have done the work for the AT was CCP Dopamine. Um, right. My bad. I, I apologize to Rattati. We, 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 yeah, we, we, can't, we can't slate that against uh, CCP shit the bed Rattati. Um, but, wow, that was harsh. But at the end of the day, it was CCP Aurora who actually made the AT happen. So, yeah. you know, I... CCP, you can't mod me on this th th this fucking show. I guess have fun. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, he may have rubber stamped it, so you know. Therefore, then he gets to take credit because if he didn't oh, say no. yes, no, 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 no. You aren't you aren't doing That's this. That's how bosses work. Like, That's how bosses yeah. work. Um, you but, do all the work, but, I get all the credit. But yeah, in in, in all seriousness, Ooh, I I was modded on the AT Discord for suggesting that dopamine didn't do the work and aurora did and uh we're, we're still having a bit of a word slap fight with uh isd over that one it's been fun well, it just sounds it just it just sounds completely pointless like i know that like it's it's good to make sure that like you know people get the you know uh, people get uh credited with like the work that they've done but like my god it just sounds like a pointless argument. That's so very CCP, doesn't it? That does sound very CCP ish, yeah. <laughs> the fuck was that? My phone, don't worry about it. Okay. I was going to say, apparently, so Dawn cat brought her a bird. <laughs> <laughs> what I also found weird um, was that the messaging was all a bit jumbled up. Right. Um, CCP Aurora at one point is talking about how they want us to undock more. And the next segment they have is talking about how they made docking a lot prettier and a lot more exciting. So, <laughs> like, CCP, come on. You, we no, want you no, outside no. of... Did you, did, didn't, you, didn't you catch the, the, hidden, the hidden thing in there that was going to get people to undock more? What, it, 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 it was the pretty UI that you get when you undock, right? No. No? Aurora said she didn't know if you'd still be able to spin your ship. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, if you want to spin your ship, then you have to undock. Right. Wait, wait. Exactly. Spinning your ship is, is news now? There's, there's, there's been a literal counter in the client about how many times you've spun your ship. For years, yeah. But you know, you 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 have to have fun undocking to to spin your ship. Um, I will say, Auric Crusade in Twitch chat is saying, I don't understand why everyone is so upset. That was the largest content presentation from CCP for four years. He gets I, I, for I, that, I, one. I, that. That I'm is treat that as a sarcastic comment, but it I was worth know. bringing up because, wow. I mean, I think, I think technically, I think technically he is correct on that one. Which is the best kind of correct. Yes. This is, this is without a doubt, this is without a doubt the best fan fest CCP has put on in the last four years. How many fan fests have they put on in the last four years, Orendus? So, so let's continue. As of now, one. Let's continue with the things that, um, we were actually enjoying, um, we were enjoying things. I, I actually had a lot of fun with uh, CCP's CCP Games games. <laughs> oh. I did not see it. Well, it had less tight uh, fitting clothing and less lube, so I was not as <laughs> impressed as, as I was with the original. Yeah, no lube, no spandex. Exactly. Well, what the Very fuck? Disappointed. <laughs> I, I I did like all of the jabs, um, the co 
uh, the hosts were doing at themselves, basically. Um, yeah, so we would, I would like royalties from uh, Convict because he kept using a lot of one-liners that pre I'm pretty sure originates from Push to Talk. Yeah, like Convict, um, <laughs> we were we, we had the theory that you were keeping notes uh, from all of our uh, talks we had, but um, I, I think we have the confirmation now. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. We're, we're, we'll take our royalties in, I don't know... Not uh, actually into bus bus coins. Who gives into bus coins. No, no, yeah, no, well, no, Caleb. Into bus Caleb. coins, yeah. <laughs> Caleb. Interbox. Interbox. Yes. In, That's in, in, so in much better. Arendus just in, so in, much better. Bus crypto. We do. We need to just call it Interbox. Yeah. That's that's what I said when when they announced it. Like, yeah, exactly. Like, I'm, I'm not I'm not taking credit for that. That was uh... well. I have already renamed them. They are actually CCP Paps. CC Paps. Yes. CC Paps. CC Paps. <laughs> wow. Okay. You get that's them the for thing, undocking and participation so, and stuff, and you can't. And, it, and it's so and it's oh, only oh, like that's that. That's amazing. Point. Yeah, it, it it is it is partition it is CCP's version of apps. Yeah. It oh my Interbox. god! Interbox presents CCP games, CCP Paps games. <laughs> so you you're saying that I can get participation coinage if I show up in spandex and lube? Not yeah, for me. I, mean, that, I think I think for Caleb that's no, a win-win. Yeah, that sounds like oh, a win. Caleb. I Not think you CCP. have to talk to Reeve about that. Like, see, see, oh, CCP she'll sign off on a... that one. I'm, I, I can guarantee it. She's going to say, that, have, have fun. The CCP have a no spandex, no lube policy, so you'd have to, like, do it somehow. You know, we, we have a Caleb only fan for spandex and lube. Hmm? There, 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 there could be a guest appearance with uh, Dirk if I can convince him to have some docking games. Nah. And 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 you wanna you wanna oh go God. with spandex and lube? <laughs> I'm okay without thanks. <laughs> I, I would, I'm, I'm not. I am like, not okay like. with this conversation. <laughs> well, you, you yeah, initiated I, I, this. I, I think no one that actually knows what the term docking means is okay with this conversation. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's disgusting. Links, please. We 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 are not we we are not explaining this. By the way, <laughs> you can find that one out by yourself. Yeah, we're, we're absolutely not. <laughs> um, I, I would like to point out that like uh, CCP Games games, like if you are if you did actually watch it and you're like, oh my god, this is insanely cringe. That's the point. That's the point. That yeah. was exactly yeah. the point. Um, yeah, I mean, it's did, a did USP. Did, did everyone love? Uh, <laughs> it's a USB. Oh my God, yeah. um, did did everyone love Antiquarian's wig? By the way, was it a wig? Yes. I, I are you I'm sure it's a wig? Sure it was a wig. It stayed I'm on there sure. pretty well. I, I I don't think he had. We've been on lockdown for four plus years, right? I, yeah, Which but I don't last. I, I don't think he has. has have you seen? Did you see the nomad with his hair? But did you see Nomad's beard? It's like. It, it it it's like Steve Renukin size now. Oh, okay, Caleb, I'm I'm just curious here. What the hell's been going on in Denmark that you've been on lockdown since 2018? <laughs> and and more to the point, Caleb, why haven't you grown a beard? Oh, I actually tried that because uh, Arendus was teasing me, and I can actually grow a beard. But Jesus Christ, that shit tickles, and I was yeah, it was <sighs> horrible. I had to take it off like you day three. <laughs> it only itches for a brief time, Caleb. But Jesus Christ, it itches. Like, horrible, horrible itches. I, I keep touching my face a lot, but this was, like, <laughs> ridiculous. It's one of those you, you, things you where... Push through. Yeah. I find it hilarious that Caleb is explaining uh, itching stuff to, to people with uh, psoriasis. Like, yeah, Caleb, that, that's not an excuse. Come on. Yeah, but like, again, you, so you I had, I had a choice. I, I, if you had the choice and you could make it go away, wouldn't you do that? I do have a choice, and I do make it go away. Yay, topical steroids! 
Come on, God. <laughs> I'm not going there. Well, Boy, we have all the time in the world to do. Uh, wow. <laughs> I mean, there, there's also our immune therapy horrendous, but that shit's expensive. There is, but you know, the topical works until the until you know winter ends and you can get out and get some more sunlight and it just fades on its own. <laughs> Arendus also can't afford the immune therapy because he's in the U U.S. So um, yeah. Wow. Yeah, you'd have to sell off some body parts for that. Nah, I just, I just pester Eric. I mean, isn't that what <laughs> kidneys for at the end of the day? <laughs> yeah, you've got to. They hey. literally built in spare. <laughs> exactly. Um, Goonie DuPont in Twitch chat is asking if Caleb was joining us in Berlin. I kind um, of have to. I was part of planning it, so. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you, can't, you can't not go if you're part of planning it. The, also, the, I have the perfect hotel, straight with the door into the zoo. It's going to be grand. Caleb loves his animals, so <laughs> the yeah, fuck? great for you. <laughs> he, he, he's actually got a zoo hotel. Yeah. Yep. Um, that was a, a remark for Dawn if she's actually still around because I'm here. She, she agrees with me that that must be the most awesome experience that you get a pass for the zoo and you can go straight from the hotel into the zoo with your private entrance. <laughs> Yeah, um, I, I, I suppose, I gi given that we've mentioned Berlin a little bit um, on previous shows and we're talking about it now, like, we should probably talk about what Berlin is a thing for, right? Yeah, why not? Well, it's a city in Germany. I mean. um, but, yeah, at, at the end of the day, we're, we're a bunch of goons watching the show and a bunch of people kind of, like, here talking about it um where we're going to berlin in the middle of july and holy shit we're, we we've got a lot more people than wanted to go to fanfest for it um we're going to take a weekend and be, have a proper goon meet um what what does a proper goon meet mean South of well, it involves a lot of alcohol i can tell you that um, and paddles ha uh, how, how do you plan for a proper goon meet? You don't. It uh, happens organically. <laughs> yeah. You just go wherever uh, the group fancies going, and uh, you find yourself in, in places you didn't expect to go. That's basically how, how it works. Like Usually the, there's like little to no planning involved at all. Um, make sure the paddles are allowed. <laughs> um, yeah, bring your own. Why paddles. do we let Caleb speak again? Um, because <laughs> we love him. <laughs> what, what sort of sandwiches can we expect uh, in Berlin? Don't Does anybody kebabs. know? Don't know kebabs. Oh, we did say Does... that was a sandwich, didn't we? Yeah, yeah. Kebabs. we classified it as a sandwich, so that's we, what we're having. We did. A nice big bratwurst. I know you I butchered that sausage? name. No. You, you can get those like uh, between two pieces of bread, so <laughs> that would be a sandwich, right? Sounds more like motor voting. <laughs> <laughs> this is why we have Caleb. <laughs> you asked me to. You you put it right there in front of me. Of course. <laughs> Why do we let him talk again? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm muted. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I, I guess we let him talk because he makes us laugh. Now, exactly. um, side side thing. Uh, they talked about the faction warfare revamp, and. I remember we were talking about it yesterday that people were thinking that maybe it's how they're going to do Sob Warfare 2 or, or be similar to how Sob yeah. Warfare is going to change. 
Yeah, it sounds like they're kind of going down the path of letting Aurora revamp the whole standing and sovereignty system with the faction warfare changes. At, at least that's what I took away from her presentation. Um, and it sounds uh, kind of interesting. It's it's very much some of the things that we've talked about before that standings as a system had been left. Uh, yeah, exactly, like to rot. And with no actual functions and the functions that they had were abused and just pretty much yeah horrible so the fact that they might actually fix that would be great i mean once again getting your hopes up man the the thing that really gets me about any sort of nullsec changes is that they've they've talked about these story arcs and the, the fact that there has to be a lore explanation for the game changes and I think that's more th to... those have to come through the medium of faction warfare. How the fuck do you do soft changes through Whoa. the medium of faction warfare? Serious question. L leave that to the law nerds, but it, it's kind of an interesting way to stagger it, right? And and manage expectations on, on how fast or how slow they can implement uh, monumental changes like this, because this ties into what they talked about with taxation, right? Even though that has a little bit of a horrible thing with the whole taxing of LP, how about we just get rid of bind on pickup bullshit in the game entirely and just make LP tradable um, instead of this crap? I think taxation changes are going to be great if they can get them to work. But of course, Arendus is going to remind me that it's CCP making it. So I don't know. Why would I do that? I don't know. You usually do that. I've got. I, I've done it enough to, at this point, you do it preemptively for me. I don't need <laughs> that. That's the point. I do. It's also why I'm not allowed to talk about slots anymore. Uh, <laughs> After the conversations yeah. you've been initiating here, you're just not allowed to talk about slots on general principle. <laughs> I didn't. I preemptively stopped myself. Good. <laughs> As you should have. Uh, anyone pay attention to CCP talking about the MPE for like the tenth time. Wait, sorry. Was are that they are they the... doubling down their efforts towards the MP? <laughs> no, they're 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 they're. What they were talking about was that they are continuing to expand the air NPE in ways that are basically slowly taking over the the career agent space which is a good thing i mean you know having having that having the career agent stuff in a much more useful and intuitive interface that has better has better qualities for player retention is a good thing my only issue with that is that once again, once you finish that, you slam into the actuality of Eve, and suddenly you're going, why the fuck am I playing this game? I want to get back to the one I was just playing. So we got a guest that keeps banging on our door and wants to be let in. Uh, is this the right time, or what's... I'm trying to figure out, like, how to, um, how to get him yeah. in the moment. Like, he needs to join a channel for us to drag yeah. him into channel. Yeah, like public, public voice, voice. <laughs> exactly. Um, but, but precisely. In in the meantime, I I, I do kind of in before like fifteen people join public voice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. But we should really go back to the idea that, um, you know, the the NPE as it stands, CCP have been making changes to it for how many fucking years? We're on which iteration right now? Yeah, um, but but by, by my tracking, we're on NP like six point one. Yeah, no, no, yeah, no, no. This, um, this this is NPE two point one Gen three. Oh yeah. Like, uh, <laughs> what, how, however, what they. Quarter is that? However no, they it's decide, at least it's at least it's at least three point something. However, they decide they want to like talk about it internally or whatever, or how we decide we want to talk about it, be it six point one or. Gen uh, 2.0, Gen 3, what, whatever the fuck. But in their you, defense, you, you they still did... do smack right into the mission system. Yeah, and, and this is something that they did show some stuff, which kind of, I don't know if it defends the, the whole NPE an, another time, right? But if they tweak it and fix it with that new system, and, and if they 
link it into faction warfare I, I do actually almost think that it could be good and actually might work they also promised us uh, better tools for uh, uh corporate and uh, alliance recruitment stuff so if they if they delivered just like let's say 20 percent of all the things that were up i'm almost inclined to say that it's okay that they still want to try and fix the np I mean, how yeah. what what do they need to fix that they couldn't have like? How could they fix anything that like they couldn't have fixed for five years? Well, because it it was always something that we kept screaming about when it came down to the whole NPE thing. It's it's the handover, right? The the what now? And in are you dying, hey, Caleb? Are you dead? This, uh, someone is coming for. Uh... That was not me. Someone's coming from you, Cloud. Uh, and yeah, anyways, sorry. The, the point is that the, the the thing we kept criticizing them about was that they didn't do any handoff, that they didn't hand the, off the new players to existing players and player organizations or new types of activity. But if you have that two prong thing where either you can then finish the MPE by going to player groups or you can go into faction warfare and figure out what you want to do yourself, that kind of makes sense. I, I, Again, with the horrendous caveat, it's CCP doing this, and they do have to actually deliver something that works. But this actually does make sense, and it's it's something that I think uh, we said to them every single time they did an NPE. We screamed this at them. You're using me for, as the excuse for a lot of your negativity, dude. <laughs> <laughs> hey, if it works, um. I'm I'm gonna shout out Karanis in Twitch chat or Karandis, sorry, in Twitch chat, mainly because he's quoting me from the article that I wrote, uh, and I'm absolutely up for that kind of self promotion. Um, but but he's quoting a thing that I wrote in 2019 and kind of reiterated an article that I published yesterday morning, which is that given enough time and enough typewriters, monkeys could write the works of Shakespeare. And it seems like EVE Online is trying to throw a lot of monkeys and a lot of typewriters at what <laughs> the fuck could happen to EVE Online without actually having an idea of what the fuck should happen to EVE Online. And, and, and Bad Blood, I just want to defend myself. Uh, we talked about things like shitting the bed earlier, and I do actually, when it comes to EVE, suffer from something that's similar to Battered Wife Syndrome. I've been around here so long that uh, I kind of don't understand and get uh, all the criticism all the time. Uh, I, I don't really know how to leave. <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I think everyone in this channel has some sort of version of... Uh, what, what, what is it called? Stockholm Syndrome? Yeah, when it comes that, to EVE Online? Yeah, I think that's quite accurate. Yeah, they're they're slowly... all chiming in now and ag agreeing that they are in the same <laughs> PTSD situation as the rest of us. I'm slowly but surely uh, getting disillusioned with uh, playing and uh, playing other games. Like dinosaurs! You all should come play dinosaurs with me. <laughs> we had that discussion I mean, in, I mean... uh, in internal uh, chats the other day when we were really... Uh, like criticizing the whole thing and we were reclassifying uh, eve online and and talked about of course uh, scam citizen but the but the problem is exactly what what dawn is pointing out here right you if you go and play anything else you're gonna find out yeah eve is broken but the rest is worse well, I was going to say real quick is, uh, where, where's, where's the fucking passive moon mining that was teased two years ago? Good God, no. No. Yes, passive it, moon it, mining is dead. Away. Let it stay dead. People who aren't playing the game shouldn't make fucking money for not playing the game. But it means I have something to go fight over po random shit moons for. Don't blow up their Athenors. Exactly. Yeah, so they just I want to get Athenors so they'll die the faster. Like they just changed everything so the moons will have, um, which is coming out Tuesday, I believe, where the uh, timers and shit are going to be completely different, where basically you have an armor timer and that's it. Other than that, uh, the things can die very quickly. So now you can go fight over those Athenors and you only have to return once like a boss, which is 
the exact same as passive moon mining, other than that they don't get free money. Like passive moon mining wouldn't is is not going to get you more fights. No, the, the 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 whole thing about passive moon mining previously was that it gave alliances uh, a direct income, and the other thing as well is that it had a very short conflict time. You you could reinforce it one day and come back the next and have a fight about and the it, thing. And but, it, but I think you, you don't it, have it that the age of World process. Structures. It was completely different. You can't compare it. it, it this is this is when everyone keeps talking about that passive moon mining. What, how the yeah, game worked yeah. back then oh, was yeah. so different. You you can't do that now. It will break the mold completely. Also, I just, I just like to point out one thing: um, passive moon mining wasn't fucking passive. You had to go around and refuel these fucking bosses and pick shit up. And yeah, have a bunch of logistics yeah. legwork. So please, like, before you, you know, try to you know, harken back to those old, old days. It wasn't just fucking push boot on collect money. You had to do a lot of effort or put in a lot of effort to actually get it done. And it also spawned unholy things like 250 plus pulse uh, reaction farms because who the fuck wants to sell his raw moon goo? That's bad profit. Yeah, the but, reaction but farms would, were insane. Who would do that? Run, run a reaction farm with like more than 10 pulses with? Like, come on. I don't know. I may have been um, guilty of doing that, and it made us a whole boatload of money. I mean, Soth has a fair point. No sane person would do that, but nobody in this channel is sane anyway, so we're okay there. High level EVs <laughs> are not generally known for their sanity, just saying. Yeah, and, and again, the one, thing, just... the one thing about um, quote unquote passive moon mining is. Um, that it's a conflict driver. And it's not a conflict driver between opposing sides. It's a conflict driver within structures, right? With, within alliances, within coalitions. I mean, how many coalitions have we seen split apart because of quarrels over, over moons? I mean, just and, and think then, about the whole stuff, yeah. CO2 deal. That happened over moons. Well, not entirely, uh, but um, it's a pretty good summary, I think. The, well, the bit about CO2 is that they got, uh, they had a financial director that were investing like criminal amounts of risk. And, 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 and just just to Mike's point with the whole upper uh, management and alliance level income, well, if they fix this taxation thing to an alliance or a, a corporation or upper management, ISK is way better than fucking raw materials. But, but Caleb, to, um, to, 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 st to steal a quote from CCP Retarty live on stage earlier today, you should reward good students for doing things at school. <laughs> oh my god. That, that, no. those are, that, that's a direct quote. Those are words he said on stage during his um, like Living Universe presentation or whatever the fuck. Like, I don't know. Every time Rizzati opens his mouth, something he just says. Out. It's he like he doesn't know shit. how. It's like he doesn't know how not to belittle people. He 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 did acknowledge that Eve is a game. That's but it's it's up. not. But it's not like he actually gave any indication of how we want to play the game. Yeah, well, in, in, in the only thing that I had a little bit of a beef with was calling this whole thing uh, heraldry. Uh, I think that. That's they all I, 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 think, I, I think very quickly he's going to be renamed to CCP Muzzled. Uh, nobody's uh, going to muzzle know. him. He's going to get shot before he gets muzzled. What the hell are you talking about very quickly? And, and he's been in charge for three years now. More than three years. Um, and, and when I said he's going to get shot before he gets muzzled, what I mean is he's going to get fired before he gets yeah, muzzled. Not I'm, yeah. I am not I'm not nope. condoning or encouraging any sort of real-life violence, please. Like, nobody take anything about that. Um, yeah, exactly. But, Don't be a dick. But, but Arendis has a very good point, in that Ritati has been in charge of EVE Online's development for more than three years now. Which brings us to a very good segment that I'm actually going to pass back to Arendis. Where the fuck is CCP Mambjorn, and who is the executive producer of EVE Online? We have an executive Ooh. producer. 
Rumored. Our, our Endus is apparently not going to so, respond. To answer this no. question, I refer you to the eminent sage and poet laureate Eminem. <laughs> who once said, Dre's dead. He's in my basement. <laughs> you have to go there. Yeah. It, I did. Ma Man, of course, you, you have to go there. Orendus? Can you what? cue that one up for later, Wibbler? <laughs> Uh, if Mambion's in Arendus's basement, at least we know where Mambion is. Yeah. But that, that this is a serious question that I kind of want to bring up again. Where the fuck is the executive producer for Eve Online? They weren't on stage during this fan fest. I don't know, but there's somebody they're, in public they're, voice they're, that they're, might they're, be. They don't talk to us. The fuck. Yeah, I think Bad Blood wants uh, uh, a few points on 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 all these things. It, yeah, look, I'll, I'll, I'm gonna quickly, like you know, bring him in, as such. Uh, let me just answer. You know, Bad hey, Blood, can you hear us? Yeah. Hey, are you CCP? Man Bjorn. Man Bjorn. No, I'd rather kill myself. Ah, <laughs> oh, damn it. No, I need no. to okay. step out for a bit. I'll be back later. All right, mate. You, you know, I I've, I've been listening to uh, to this show for a pretty pretty decent amount of time. Oh, let me mute myself on the, on the stream. And <laughs> I th I think uh, what what Caleb was was saying about you know this 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 syndrome that we have, like we we can't quit the game, and we we continue to come back to it. That's I th I think that resonates through. A lot of uh, a lot of the players right now, and I've been playing since I think 2009 or something, just right after Wormholes came out. And every fan fest, every fan fest, there was talk about uh, new player experience, faction warfare. Uh, then came walking in stations. They showed us a demo of people actually walking. <laughs> uh inside stations it was a complete demo graphics were done just didn't work right so they gave us the next be best thing that was captain's quarters it worked yeah. fine like i mean it lagged you the hell out if if your pc wasn't up to spec but it worked and then you know, at least you had something to look forward to. At least it was something, okay, we have captain's quarters. The next step is walking the stations, right? They're working on it. So we were patient. But on the other hand, like, there was a section of the player base that was going to burn down Jidda, and that, that actually happened. And so it was... It was all these promises, all every time, every time. Yeah, new player experience, faction warfare, walking the stations. Uh, then a shooter came out, it was was great. I played it, but you know, it, it was every time they release a feature, it's it's in beta, or it doesn't work like it's supposed to work, or um, you know, it gets canceled. Um, Oh, how long have we been using the uh, the probe scanner now in beta version? Like, I don't I don't understand where where the lack of vision or the somebody just needs to say this is what we're doing and we're doing it, and then they deliver on it, but they're they're never doing it. And hearing fan fest after fan fest, yeah, we're gonna revamp the new player experience. I mean. There have been, this has been a discussion for, for since 2009, since I started playing. So I, I don't, don't know uh, if it goes back even further than that, but. Right, it does. And, and, and this yeah. is what, where, um, when you're taking us down memory lane, uh, I think a few years back uh, when we were still doing talking in stations, we started uh, using and throwing around the term trophophobia, which is basically that. Yeah that doing the grand visions, that was always the thing for EVE Online. Again, if, if you do a grand vision and something that people can dream about, that fucking sells. That's why Star Citizen is a thing, right? You don't Sorry. even have to deliver 
10 20 percent of your promises if you make your promises big enough and even yeah. then because of the promise of oh it might come next year or next year this is the whole just wait till fan fest it's like that was what we were living on back then in the Trophy france era yeah. right because yeah. we had the dreams we we, we hope that maybe next time we're going to get the big stuff and the cool shit and the walking in stations and cities in space but after we lost uh seagull I feel like they completely lost their balls and mm. they don't want to dream anymore. They don't want to over promise anymore in, in the fear that we get mad. Well, I think we get more mad when you don't promise anything at all. Yeah. I, I mean, I think what, what happens is uh, these, the, the CCP Seagull was, you know, lover or hate her. At least she delivered on a lot of promises and, S some promises were good, some were bad, you know, uh, some people just hated her guts, uh, you know, whatever. What you, you could say about her what you want, but she delivered at least a, a good chunk of what she said. And um, even the, um, the release cycle that she announced back then uh, was a good start for something new. And then all of a sudden she, I think she had a child. And then she disappeared. Yeah, and and and, that's and, really yeah. and I think... we don't have to talk too much about that. But but as uh, uh, Krasov is saying, he, he'd rather not have any promises than be lied to. Well, it is not a lie if you have a dream and a vision. Whether you can attain that is is up to circumstances and technology and cash flow and skill sets and stuff like that, right? But if you don't shoot for the moon, you're not going to get off the ground. My, my issue is with a lot of like a, a lot of the sort of the kind of visionary sort of aspects of it is when you you have that vision and like you you, you know your team is kind of set to kind of go that direction but then when you, you know essentially a, a, a new lead kind of comes in replaces the old one like generally they tend to have a different vision they want to go their own direction and, and the visions that we were kind of like hoping for and praying for like you know, on the previous kind of instance, like they end up basically being uh, either co just completely removed and not even realized at all, or they're like sidelined into something that is just essentially like they just end up being really disappointing. Like, for example, like when we're, if, if we're talking about sea, uh, about seagulls kind of like tenure, right? One of the, I think one of the biggest visionary kind of things was like the new Stargate kind of like uh system or like the the sort of like new kind of ability to build new stargates to new stars and all that kind of stuff and like we even had a, a really awesome trailer for something like that right which was really yeah, fucking cool yeah. and that was and, never realized and the only kind of time when when that was sort of realized was basically as a jump bridge replacement which was just so disappointing well, but she also uh, had the whole vision of, 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 of Upwell and the, the new ecosystem. And a lot of these things got delivered. There was mistakes and, and, and in my opinion, bugs in many of these things like infinitely spawning anomalies. And, and then we got the SP injection and we got the, yeah, we, all that story. We've talked about that incessantly on this show, but, but she did actually deliver a lot of what was promised. And of course, you can yeah. say in, in the last part when she uh, was kind of halfway out the door and the whole thing of, of moving back to Sweden and all that stuff. Well, of course, she might not have been pushing as hard, but there was a lot of things being delivered. And at least the fan fest with Siegel were amazing. Well, I, I don't yeah. I don't want to I don't want to say that, like, I, I'm not saying that, like, you know, the fact that we that the. The, the Stargates that we eventually got was really lackluster was is on Seagull in any way, shape or form. Like, no, that's not what I'm saying at all. Like the fact that she had to move on and then, you know, somebody was replaced and basically didn't follow through on that kind of vision is the thing that like really irks me. And you can see there's like multiple, like different sort of like there's, there's, there's um, examples of this sort of thing, like just scattered all over, like, ccp's like development history yeah and, and if you look at what chat is basically commenting on right they're basically saying regardless of your opinion of the of the era seagull understood the game this is maybe the most important thing to take away right because currently it feels to me like leadership and many of the developers 
are so ignorant about the core of EVE Online that this is this is just what we could expect. Because again, everyone likes to uh, rage at, at Rattati, and I don't like getting personal, but it's very clear he doesn't understand EVE. Uh, he, he really mm -hmm. doesn't get the, the, the way that it works and the way that, that, that we play the game and, and how we are driven by the game and the old school interaction with CCP. And I also even feel like um, uh, CCP Burger has a different vision for EVE Maybe he understands a bit of it, but it, it it really doesn't feel like what Eve is supposed to be like. And Siegel definitely understood that. She had dreams that were directly similar to the majority of the Eve player base. The thing, so uh, I, I just yeah. want to really quickly say this, but like the thing that I that really irks me, like kind of really gets and like aggravates the hell out of me about Rotati is like it's almost as if he is. Or, or almost too proud or too stubborn to basically say, you know, to be humble enough to say, like, maybe I don't know That's everything the about Eve. Way, it it kind of, uh, maybe it is the Icelandic way, but like, I mean, you can't just, you, you can't just kind of like use that kind of excuse, like, especially when it's, you know, fundamentally hurting the company, you know, fund fundamentally hurting the IP, you know. Like, I would love it if, if, if Rotati turned around and was like, look, maybe I don't know everything about EVE Online, but I'm willing to learn. I'm willing to, to sit down and, you know, talk to players, see their side of, you know, EVE Online, see what, like, what EVE Online is to them, how they play, you know, how their play and their game loops are, are kind of connected and how they, in, in, you know, how they kind of make up the fabric of, of EVE Online. But he doesn't. Well and, and, so and like, let's remember that the flip side of that is that instead of always talking about arrogance, the flip side of that is also shame, right? It, it might be that he is afraid to admit these things. He doesn't know what the response will be if he admits that maybe he doesn't fully get it. Maybe he needs to ask someone. So it, it's got a lot to do with more about mm, pride and shame than necessarily about arrogance. Of course, it, it ends up as feeling a lot like arrogance, but most of the people that act like that are really doing it because they're afraid. Uh, I, I got, I got uh, I'm wrong reading the uh, right, tweet. Right, I just want to say something real quick. Um, as far mm -hmm. as, as far as all of this goes, all right, as far as, you know, well, Seagull, Seagull outlined this vision, and it feels like you know we're moving away from that. But and and new people come in and have a different idea. That's all great. That's all fine. Generally speaking, when a new head developer comes into a game like this, like Manbjorn or Rattati, if director of product means that he's actually in charge and the executive producer isn't, I, I have no idea because. You know, clarity is not apparently one of their strong suits right now. Um, that's okay. That's that's not a bad thing. But generally speaking, you have to communicate the new vision. Well, you have to tell well, people what the hell is going on, and if, they haven't. If, if you, you were work out uh, CCP clarity. If, I'm if saying, in many out. ways, this comes back to one of Dirk's favorite points. Where the hell is Manbjorn? <laughs> well, I, I think that's that's the that's the problem. It's like CCP um, appoints a new uh, head of uh, of whatever, uh, and and a CCP Seagull comes in. She outlines a new vision, and then she quits, and then a new person comes in. And instead of continuing what they were doing, they are reinventing the wheel. And they, they start something new. And every time uh, a new person comes in, they do the same thing over and over again, reinventing that wheel. And I, I think that the people who should be outlining that vision are just not uh, at the position long enough to really change 
what needs to be changed. Like, CCP Siegel was in charge for what, like four years, maybe less, three but, years? But this is, and this that's is... just not enough. And then to have somebody else come in and replace her, that's fine. Okay. If, if... But it used, to, it used to be okay, because when it comes to blue sky thinking and, and, and big grand vision, we had people like Hilma and we had Torfi Franz to do the ridiculous dreaming and selling us things that we all knew Even... this is never going to happen. But at least we could dream with them. But... That got the lost Jesus when Torfi, yeah, when when Torfi left, no one had that creative dreamer position anymore. Uh, that's also why we got that weaker and weaker uh, types of fan fest after that, because no one could really sell that. Right, Hilma got worse and worse at it. I think he was busy doing CEO stuff. But the point is, when we lose the dream and the fantasy then it's really going to be a load on actual execution and the executive producer and actual deliverables because there is no fantasy anymore. But here's the thing about about being there long enough to 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 shape that vision and articulate that vision. All right? Seagull was in there for maybe 4 years. She came in and articulated her vision for the game pretty much right away. Yeah, she came in swinging. Yeah. The yeah, current and, leadership team has been in for at least as long, what, what, and what we've happened, heard what, nothing. What, what happened to CCP Fossey, by the way? I mean, well, Fossey yeah, was never should, in charge. No, no but should, his ideas and his uh, the, the things that he was in charge of, charge of. Uh, he is currently forever. Like he is currently leading up the live events team. I think. Uh, what the fuck? Like. <laughs> <laughs> like, I mean, uh, like b back Look, in the day, I, I, I will, I will tell you, not... I will tell you what I think happened. But this is pure speculation, okay? Fozzie was a vocal and frequent voice on Twitter saying NFTs are stupid, crypto is stupid, and I'm pretty sure he got benched for it. Wow, wow. I mean, I mean, back, I, I think in 2014, 15, I, I, I can't don't remember the exact dates, but uh, I was doing the CSM inter interviews. I had a, a fairly successful podcast back then. And actually what CCP was trying to do is uh, have a group of players next to the CSM that they would like uh, engage with. Like, you know, you have these, 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 like a guy like the Matani, uh, you know, who knows like, Critical infrastructure of things like just uh, I, I I forgot the name, but it had a specific name for it, and uh, I, I think focus groups or something like that, and that's yeah, what the CSM. Right. Yeah, no, well, it was it was run next to the CSM. That's what they wanted to do, and we were like really pushing that because we had a lot of uh, you know loud voices back then in the community. Like we had like what twenty podcasts running. We had like all these uh, new sites. You had like uh, Crossing Zebras back then. Uh, Eve News Twenty Four was still relevant. Um, uh -huh. I, I don't think think the um, Imperial uh, Imperium dot News didn't even exist back then. So that was before that. It was the um, Mitani dot com at that point. Yeah, Mitani dot com. Yeah, you're right, and. Um, so we were like really vocal about that. And we actually had the idea that we were changing something, but then all of a sudden all these key CCP people that were, you know, really engaged with the community, they all started to move to another company. I'm not going to name them, but we all know what company it is. And that's, that's when I, I, I think a lot Somebody. of people called uh, that's that's also the time where uh, like uh, a show like Open Comms uh, uh, disappeared. Um, a lot of other podcasts started to die off. Um, I, I I just that was that was a period that wasn't good for Eve. And r right now, I, I wonder what's going to happen after FanFest. I mean, if you read Reddit, uh, it's it's not looking good. Like I'm, I wonder where it's going and. Uh, well, it's because well, you, need a, you need the dreamer, right? You need someone to flesh out what is the long-term plan of EVE Online. Seagulls and any executive producer's role has always been to implement something month on month, year on year, not three years, five years, ten years into the future. And 
when when Hilma has been going around doing other things and getting sold on weird uh uh yeah. stuff, yeah. Very, very strange ideas like metaverse and NFTs and crypto and all manner of wrong types of blue sky thinking, basically moving with the rest of the sheep. Well, then when he came back, his vision for Eve was, well, at least to me, it felt like it was dead, like he didn't remember what the game was supposed to be about. And if you look at what the original developers of, of EVE Online, many of the, the veteran uh, devs, well, they are now doing other games and trying to start over a similar vision because the dreamers are gone. Yeah. I, I mean, oh, oh, what, do you, what do you guys, like, like what, what really made me angry this this weekend was you have a two year period where which they call scarcity uh where they basically uh made it like twice or three times as hard to to uh to to, to provide free income in game uh, they made it harder to um to manufacture stuff um then they have the audacity to increase the price uh, what do you guys think is going to happen? Like, I mean, f well, they for broke me, it. Well, well, we know we know what CCP thought was going to happen because they 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 had it enshrined in their like, you know, three part like mega blog that that outlined sort of their plan, right? And you know, one of the main factors of of that, uh, you know, of that kind of vision of that sort of ethos was um, scarcity breeds conflict, right? And we all now yeah. know. That that was a pile of bullshit. Well, oh. uh, did did it before though? Like the the uh, the biggest wars were before scarcity. So how could they claim make that claim? Like how can you claim like scarcity is going to breed war when all the big wars were before that period? All the big fights were were before that period. Like yeah, a, a, a well, lot. Of, I think is it's a lot. A lot of people. Can't, you, you can't have conflict in abundance. It's not so much about scarcity, it's more about the opposite. It's about if everyone gets everything, there is nothing to fight over, there is no discussion of, of, of equality well, or you... inequality or anything like that, or even cost or loss. That was what abundance sort of did. So there was a problem and it needed to be solved. The thing is that the plan as they presented it was not what we got, not even close. And you can't fix ecosystem and economy problems with some big ban hammer that's just not gonna work no because yeah. like because you know eve is not real life like it may have kind of sort of like kind of parallels to real life but like at the end of the day you know if you know something like scarcity breeds conflict is uh, is something that you know is taken from real life but it has the reasons, the reasonings why it like that kind of like ethos works or un is understandable in real life is because nobody can just nope out of real life and then come back later, right? Whereas you can do that in Eve. You know, if the game if the game becomes you know too punishing or you know too much of a, a, a you know a kind of a, a grind without really any kind of payoff whatsoever, then people will literally like leave and go to other games other ips you know do other things um you know and that's where that kind of ethos that whole scarcity breeds conflict just starts to break down and falter and yeah, fail that's it that's its weakness right because exactly. in real life as you said right this is about existential threats and threats to your life and things like that and yeah. and uh, and and uh, uh how how much you've got roots and whether or not you can actually uh leave your home or your country and stuff like that so these factors are not in eve online i can quit whenever i want i can just shut it off right or i can easily and streamlessly move to another organization Th this is why the the, the similarities uh, break down but the similarities do work when it comes to how an ecosystem works it's just that the existential threats and 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 life and death and hunger and starvation and stuff like that does not work the same way because if I get start feeling like I'm starving when I'm playing Eve, I'm not going to go to war with my next door neighbor necessarily. I'm just going to shut, uh, turn off the game because this is just dumb. Yeah, and uh, so many uh, people uh, have kind of done that. The, the, you, you, this, sorry, this, go ahead. this does lead me though to to another thing CCP talked about uh, 
during during one of the presentations and um that was uh the dbs that was analyzed and they showed that um the income from from ratting has gone back to what it was uh about 10 years ago and they claimed that it was a good thing because look ratting was like roughly a trillion a month uh in that time and now it's back to one trillion a month um and, and again that's also they, because it's wrong right so it's, it's that, not yes it's, it's what, not built the way that they <laughs> promised at all what, what it's, they it's also of... failed to uh, to show is that um, th there was no data alongside that on how many people were actually ratting and how how much time they spent ratting. So yes, it it might have gone to to one back to one trillion, but we don't know if more people were ratting, therefore getting less for the time they spent, right? And that's one of the kind of interesting things is that the devil is in the detail and the issue is is that ccp isn't actually you know going in and properly looking at the detail yeah. of the all of the data that they're getting they're just kind of like you know sort of uh, it takes a like, it. yeah they're, they're they're just they're they're, they're, they're doing it in such a half-assed way and I, I hate to kind of you know point that out in in, in that kind of way and, no, and i know that there is and I know that there is a lot of data, like EVE Online creates a lot of data every single day. But like you have to, if you if you are going to know actually realistically and truthfully what's going on in your game, which you really well, they, should, then you need to I, be able to well, tackle they, such a huge amount of data properly, and, and not just not just with broad brushstrokes. No, and this is back to the very important one, which we got this time, right? We got their, their data sets or data analysis on the raw cool abundance era. Oh, God, but yeah. Like, uh, and, and this is important because their intention might be good, but the way they, they treat the data and the data points shows exactly what we say when we say that they don't play the game because there's so many questions that needs to be asked before you start just Texas shooting and, 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 and drawing that red ring around your target and saying, uh, QED, we are right. It's like, no, you're ne not necessarily because you, you, you miss the fact that, that raw calls are usually two to three, maybe even four or, or more times uh, as long out in space, which is actually putting targets in space, which is very important and something that is actually good for the game. So that whole aspect was ignored. The other aspect that's being ignored it is, did you go and ask the people that did this and used raw calls a lot how they did it? Because no one has mentioned uh, infinite spawning uh, uh, anomalies and basically what is called vertical farming and carrying capacity of one constellation could basically feed the entirety of EVE Online. As well, Aerith tried to point out to them, it is not just the raw call. It, it's, it's bigger than that. And then their solution is a hunger phase, a, a literal starvation uh, uh, period where they basically shut off all the forces. Like, this is not the right way to control this you should have analyzed the entire problem in detail to figure out what's going on because th they did not give us data that is analyzed the correct way they they did not tell the right story it was never really the raw call that was the main problem because it is not the size of the cup it is the speed of stream from the faucet uh, you, you know I, I think ccp and uh, to make an analogy i think ccp is is like cypher from the matrix right he's sitting behind uh, a wall of computer screens and he's reading like and saying oh yeah yeah i don't even see the code i see blonde redhead and so on and he, he can he can he can look at the code and he can he can see neo fight and but he doesn't know how hard the punches hit he well, doesn't know how the rain feels on the faces or, you know, he just sees the code and reads, oh, that, that this is a oracle, that's a, <coughs> that's a mining barge, and but they have no idea. But it's a, it's, a, it's a domino effect, right? It, it was a perfect storm. They kept adding more and more bad stuff into the game 
And the, I know that the CSM warned CCP saying, well, if you give us both infinitely spawning anomalies, and then you also give us things like raw calls, and then you also give us skill injectors so we can get into the raw call pretty much streamlessly uh, without any fucking traction or, or, or delay, we're going to outproduce everything. And, and the numbers that he showed, the, the Dell Miracle, they were warned about this. And the fact that they keep omitting that fact is basically lying by omission because oh God. the CSM said, if you do this, <laughs> this will happen. If you keep doing this, Aerith also kept saying this will happen. And they just kept ignoring it. And whether that's a trust issue, it might be, or whether it's just arrogance, I don't know. I'm just saying, start talking to the people that actually understand these things and actually play with it every day instead of, okay, now I'm going to uh, name names. I'm sorry, I'm going to do this. You should have asked Imperium and goon industrialists instead of fucking Kenneth Feld when you wanted to change industry. Yeah. Because yeah. <laughs> Kenneth Feld yeah. does not fucking know anything about industry. I know more about industry because I did actually on scale high sec based industry in the period when it was really, really hardcore. And the people I was competing with was basically the Imperium. But now yeah. we've got this fucking dumb industry changes. And it's like, Talk to the real Eve players and not to the fucking face rollers, please. What, what, what is actually absolutely hilarious is that I went to a space meeting for 25 minutes and came back to Caleb railing against infinite slot. And <laughs> it, 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 I know, it, I'm sorry, we let him go there, but he yeah. had <laughs> such a nice conversation. The, the, the he seems thing, so happy. The he, 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 he was it's making story. salient points. So, the, no, the, but the that is fair. It was, is that... it wasn't. Um, I'm, gonna I'm not allowed to talk about it. Wibblo, yeah, you've got exactly. the floor. Yeah, thank you. So, so we we disagree vehemently about a lot of things, including slots. Uh, but really, what it boils down to is effort and extort, uh, like spending effort. The most efficient way to get is call whatever the fuck you want. That's basically what it boils down to. And uh, industry, I mean, the 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 sheer fact that. CCP lets people like Kennenfeld even have a voice at the table when it comes to industry, says everything I need to know about how CCP understands their own game, which is not at fucking all. They have no fucking clue. They are fucking blind, trying to do something and failing at everything. They even attempt at doing except the stuff that CCP Aurora seems to be uh, doing right Working. now. Yeah, yeah, she's not on it. And actually, uh, I mean, I, I wasn't going to go into the fanfest stuff, but um, re realistically, uh, she got hired on as a dev how long ago, Dirk? Uh, she was a community manager for a couple of years and transitioned over to a game design role about three months ago. Uh, it's, exactly. it's roughly where uh, uh, CCP Two, three, yeah. became a, a, a game designer rather than a community dev. Um, Right. The the reason we know this is because some of us follow the tournament scene, and uh, CCP Aurora was critical in getting the tournament scene back up and running. Um, oh yeah, absolutely. The the, um, the the new higher CCP Zealous is actually replacing CCP Aurora's role and taking a ton of the, the work for tournament stuff. So I really hope that works out. Yeah. Um. So back to my point. Um. She pres uh, presented a bunch of stuff about uh, faction warfare, and I get the the impression that all of that, well, not, maybe not all of it, but a lot of that was her work. It was her ideas. It was very apparent that it was something that she actually cared about, and I think that that has promise. Um, with regards to industry and anything that uh, CCP or Tati touches, I think it's just going to turn into shit. I, I, I mean... From what we saw, it was concept art and ideas and and work in progress and actually nothing that they showed us was uh, was demoed. Even the yeah. demo was the undocking stuff, which looked cool, had no textures in it. <laughs> exactly. You know? I, I mean, I mean, um, I, I'm still like like I want to hear your opinions on it, uh, but what. Well, when CCP Paragon, I think his, his name was, um, said that they are were going to release the you know the or the make the biggest announcement uh, in, in CCP history, it's and looking be big. back on that right now, how do you guys feel about that? Because I think the community really wants to, you know, uh, 
you know, engage in some, you know, <laughs> I don't know, some fire, yeah. some, I think there's a lot of hate right now. And how do you guys feel about that? I mean, the, I'm, the question I'm, I have is, where is our fucking announcement? I, I was going to yeah, say, like, yeah, I'm waiting for the yeah. announcement. <laughs> I'm just going to say, if that's big, your girlfriend has been lying to you. Um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> blow, blow. Right. But I think, does, um, does it... like, I, I, I said already, um, the the biggest thing we've gotten and and the one that resonated the most with with players both in in chat and in in our usual group where we hang out uh was ccp aurora talking about faction warfare right but yeah. it did definitely feel like most of these are just ideas uh and she said herself that they are going into a, the designing phase next week and and, and so, again, we trust her because of her history right so she's already proven that yes she can actually deliver maybe not all of the things that she promises but she will actually try to deliver it, as much as possible so, th this so, is the thing right like some I, I, I feel like we're in a loop right now because back <laughs> you know previous fan fest i heard the same shit <laughs> yeah yeah like uh, and, <laughs> I, I mean, it does feel a little bit like an Incarna thing, but but I mean, yeah. some CC some some CCP developers currently have the benefit of the doubt when it comes to what they're working on and what they they might be able to implement. But by and large, the company itself, you you have no reputation with the player base. You have no leg to stand on. There's nothing when it comes to your reputation anymore. Well, we don't trust you. We exactly. don't want to give you the benefit of the doubt anymore. Well, and and if someone like Please Rise promises us to at least uh, tweak uh, some of the balance problems with ships, we mostly trust him, right? Because he's got a record. We know that he understands the yeah. game enough. If someone like Fozzy says, okay, I'm going to actually double down and fix your, your ADM stuff and your sub uh, modifiers and maybe give you uh, at least the beginning of a new sub system, we would actually say, okay, that actually sounds I, I, like I, something we can trust because he has actually delivered before. Maybe not I, what I, we I wanted. Fuzzy but, uh, but again, Fuzzy Sov, again, like, back, back, back to the point. Yeah. Fuzzy Sov, as everyone rails on, right? Anyone that remembers the Sov system we had before that will know that that is not better. And yes, we did not get exactly what we were promised, but that's always the problem, right? And the fact that we always come back to, CCP, please reiterate and, and fix the things that you delivered in a broken state. And they keep ignoring us on that point because Fossisov as such is not bad. It's just, it feels unfinished, just like structures feels unfinished. It's just every single thing is about CCP. They want the next blingy thing to sell to more people instead of fixing the things that are broken. And of course, flash-wise and marketing-wise, that is true. But maybe if they stopped iterating on the NPE and took some of those hours and spent them on fixing broken things and features we already have in the game that are actually fucking cool if they get fixed, we would get a, a, a game that actually works a bit better. You know what was kind of interesting? Hang on, hang on. Can I finish my point? Because <laughs> I was actually going to make a point and you all keep interjecting. Okay. Um, okay. It's not just that we trust Aurora. Right, it is that CCP know that we do, right? Yeah. And I think it was deliberate that they put her on stage and let her talk about something she is passionate about and something she has <laughs> some kind of plan for, because they knew that they had nothing. You, right? You, you know, I wish I could buy your optimism. I really, you know. <laughs> no, no, it's not optimism. optimism. It's not optimism. Definitely it's, not. It's, it's they, keep piping up, they keep <laughs> piping up about all these great things they want to talk about while they know that they have nothing to talk about. The other things that they showed us, like um, the, the heraldries or however they want to call them, um, <laughs> we kept telling them that that's a very simple thing to implement, right? Um, those mock-ups they showed us... That, that's where they were. What were like mockups? Horrible like, mockups. How long? How long do you need to to prepare something like that? We we uh, saw yeah, yeah. none of that working 
in the actual engine. So no work has gone into that yet, right? They knew they had nothing. So they scraped together a few things so they can... Uh... Okay, okay. It, it, remi it, it reminds no. me of Incarna, to be honest. Like, it reminds me of Incarna, but like the thing that we know in retrospect from Incarna was they did actually put together a lot of kind of cool stuff. It's Incarna just that they were never had content. a point where they... Yeah, they... they they had stuff that they wanted to implement, but it weren't at a point where they could actually implement it. So when it actually came to the release, the Incarna release, we basically got a lot of nothing, a bunch of promises that like, you know, cool stuff is happening and will come and will come. And then a bunch of things like, you know, oh, by the way, we feel like we need a lot. We, we feel like we're owed more money. So, you know, here's a monocle for $70 kind of thing. I, I, and I, I, likely... Let's be clear about this here. Um, so, so it can't get spent by anyone uh, again. These things they showed us, um, the the Alliance skins, right? Um, yeah. the, all the faction warfare stuff uh, Aurora talked about. These are all things we can get excited about. The problem is CCP have shown over and over again that they make big promises and then under deliver. Please don't under deliver on this, right? We want this, so please put some effort into it. I swear to God, if you under deliver on alliance skins, you, you, you're just fucking done. Give us the monetization that we want. Thank you. Yeah, I would let, let, let me let me ask you. CCP is like, wait, I, wait, I, I got a good analogy for this. Okay, CCP right. is like that one dude who claim, claims he has a horse cock. <laughs> let, let me let me ask you. Like I, I remember burning down um, Jeddah, uh because of the Monaco Gate thing. Uh it and actually I felt like CCP actually listened to us and said, Okay, um apparently the player base doesn't want it, uh we're gonna change it. And then a, a period of, of no crazy uh monocle stuff happened. Um and then slowly the skill skill injector discussion started to happen, and they then the community was like, "Oh fuck no, we're we're just not gonna do it. We're not gonna stand for it. Uh, no way, no how, no skill injecting stuff." And then that happened, and I I wonder how much is it going to take for maybe for you guys, but maybe for everyone who's still playing Eve. How much is it going to take for all of us to say enough is enough? We've taken up too much of your bullshit. Uh, this is the end. Like I've, we're I've, gonna... I've already unsubbed eight accounts. I'm I'm completely unsubbed at this point. I play Discord online. I don't like, play you online. Yeah, um, yeah I, 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 I've I've unsubbed two thirds of my accounts. In the, yeah, the, I'm just... not sure about anybody else in the channel. But if you're going to ask the question about how much is it going to take? We're here talking about it because we still care about it, but we don't play I, I the game. So, yeah. I, I, I mean, mean I've I've unsubbed multiple times in in in, in like my Eve history uh, for multiple reasons. Uh, you know, um, Monaco Gate was one, then the skill injector thing that was one, and then I took a break, and and now I'm also you know unsubbed five accounts, but. Um, Every every time I get pulled in back into it, and maybe that comes back to what Caleb was saying, this is like like an addiction or like an abusive. But the relationship. thing is, I, it I is know. it is it is kind of like a, it is kind of like abusive relationship. It is kind of a, like an addiction. Like we we all kind of have you know a, a degree of vested interest and, and like you know that kind of thing in 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 uh, Eve Online. But like the thing is, you know. You can say that it's fine um, that, you know, you can unsub accounts and, and, you know, be waiting in the wings to as to when the game becomes good again uh, uh, as being OK, you know, and when the game does become good, you'll be coming back because like that that was a line from Ritati as well. Yeah, and then, um, uh, But like, but just just quickly, like but the, the longer you leave that, the longer you let people like stay on the sidelines, like waiting, the longer the the more likely that they'll find something better, and that they will never hear that the game has changed for the better. Yeah, and, yeah. Then, then, and they won't come back. Just, just real quick, right? it's a it's a Kale, monopoly. Kale, just and, real and quick before you really... get into the run, um, I just want to say Guni Dupont and Twitch chat saying we want a reason to come back and we see nothing is yeah. kind of 
it, it sums it up. So, Caleb, go have fun with your rant. Well, it's just, it's just we, we talk about sunken cost fallacy. We talk about emotional uh, damage and PTSD yeah. and uh, all that stuff. And But fundamentally, when it comes down to it from an actual business point of view, it's really just what happens when you have an, a total monopoly. And, and, I, and we have been trying to explain this to CCP on Push to Talk for many years now when it comes to USP. There is nothing out there that is even remotely like Eve. And and as I have joked a a, a bit about, every other MMO out there has nothing even remotely massive about them. Of course, people can congregate in groups of hundreds and uh, even thousands if they want to, but the game does not really require it or really make that any different, right? Of course, you can say, "Well, we, we ha- we're like a gang with uh, with with uh, uh, flags and shit, and and look at how tough we are." Well, in Eve, you get to show how tough you are. That's the whole point. So there is nothing out there that allows you to have the massive multiplayer online gaming experience. All the other games are just half measures. There, this is why there is nothing like Eve. And I'm just warning CCP: the day, the day there is just one game out there you're going to lose more than half of your player base because you have been mistreating them. It is only the monopoly that keeps them coming back because the experience they get in EVE is impossible to get anywhere else. It's, okay, not, I'm gonna... as if, it's not as if like there's that many players left to, to lose either. We're, we're down to what, an average of 20,000 players per day as a peak concurrent characters. user base? Characters. That's 20,000 characters. Fair point. No. Uh, there's probably like like ten thousand actual people. That, that is a good There's distinction five to make. Of my accounts, like I, I own five accounts, so you know, do the math on that. Like, if we do the usual sort of thing of like being, you know, Eve being a, a you know, very, um, like alt heavy kind of game. Like, and even in that regard, like even if we do like say, you know, two to three per, like you know, per account or per person, right? Like that's ten to Seven and a half to ten people, like seven and a half to ten thousand people. Sorry. Okay. Let me um, let me throw you one last curveball. Uh, that might be a bit less uh, aggravating for all of us here. Um, <laughs> CCP just announced uh ten minutes ago that um the next fan fest is not going to be in May next year. It's going to be it's... in September. It's gonna be cancelled. So, in- whoa, 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 whoa! So, so we're we're talking about a fan fest that's gonna happen sixteen um, months from now. Yes, but that's mm. um. Oh, wake me uh, up when September ends. September in Iceland. Oh fuck that! <laughs> you know what? We 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 have Berlin this year. Depending upon how Berlin goes, we might do a different city next year. But holy shit, CCP, you are not giving us any reason to come to your fucking city and give you this money. Uh, we we should we should like save this episode and say okay, that's September two thousand twenty three, and see how much they have done in eighteen months. Um, like, I, I, got an, I got an idea for the next good meet. Uh, we could go mm-hmm. to Bruges. We, 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 yeah, exactly. We can go somewhere and we'll do it in Elsewhere. July when the weather is better. And Ooh, have Goons in Bruges. Goons in Bruges, yeah. Good grief. Do, do Amsterdam, man. Amsterdam. Oh, we've done be. Amsterdam. Oh, you've yeah, done Amsterdam. <laughs> yeah. uh, we can do Prague. Like, oh my the, god. The, the no, thing that no, CCP no. seems to you fail to idea, understand. Just litter, but that. That's not a <laughs> good idea. The, the Let, thing let's that not CCP go to the porn capital of CCP, No, CCP <laughs> failed to understand everything at this point, Dirk. Like, it... it holy, like... Uh, okay, that's a fair point. They're, but... they're as clueless as a high school principal trying to catch kids vaping. Well, what like... I was gonna suggest <laughs> is that... <laughs> we, we, we what have I feel so like you opportunities. What, what I feel like you have just... a lot of experience in that, Mike. <laughs> Man, I'm. I mean, it's like there's like ten kids in the bathroom just chiefing, and the fucking dude walks in. That's CCP. Like, oh, what are you guys doing in there? Nothing. Nothing. Oh, yeah, okay. Exactly. That's fucking CCP <laughs> when they're trying to develop something. Like, holy shit! I really wonder who's just. Uh, I don't know. 
the, the, the thing that really gets me here, and Mike has a fair point, like, the thing that separates them at this point is nothing, but the thing that really gets me is that we put together these meetups so that we can all be with one another in real life and actually have a few drinks and have some fun times, right? Like, if CCP were interested in the communities that play EVE Online or want to play EVE Online or have been engaged with EVE Online, they would be fine. They wouldn't need to push FanFest to September next year or anything. They wouldn't need to ha argue with uh, Amsterdam or Toronto or Vegas or anything. They wouldn't need to argue with that shit. They, well, they would like... be able to complement that shit. But it, it... we're actually now at a point where players are getting together and organizing their own meetups because we don't want to give CCP money anymore because they haven't shown that they can do anything with it. Well, but, but the sad part here the is, fuck? Uh, in, in my opinion, if I can go a little bit uh, high level again, they don't understand their own game. They don't understand that it's not like other gaming products where as soon as you just put enough marketing out there and enough Skinner box stuff uh, in your game, they're going to come and they're going to play and they're going to love your game. The whole premise of EVE Online, in my opinion, is it's a game that you kind of have to acquire the taste for because it is not like, like other Arsenic. games. It's not a safe game. It's a game where it's about losing more than it's about winning or about feeling some sort of Skinner box high. It, it's it's really an acquired taste. It's like it's like trying to get. Uh, uh, preteens to drink coffee. Uh, first, they're going to spit it out because it's horrible, and it is. But if you, when you acquire the taste and when you understand why this game is different than other games, you're going to be hooked for life. You're not going to be able to put it down because everything else will feel stale. Because it's, it's like crazy goth. Wow. It's like a crazy goth trick or a crazy redhead. Well, I know, I know, I know that. And on that note, I, I, I have news. Um, oh, next year's uh, goon meet is going to be on Mito's boat. It, it's going to be a goon cruise. In Norway. Off, I'm not getting on a floating petri dish. Thank you. <laughs> um, goon cruise. Oh, sorry. Anyway, that, isn't and, and, that isn't posh enough for you, Dirk. What do we have no, to? Have? No, no, no Dirk it, it's not about being pretend. posh. I, I don't just. I, I just don't want to get. Dirk Ill thinks from that on a, a, on a cruise dish. ship. Dirk thinks that on a cruise ship, everyone licks everything constantly, no, no. and that it's the most unsanitary well, thing in the world. It's not but, a cruise ship, but it would be a cruise. I, 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 I have no interest <laughs> in being locked in a place with other people. Uh, uh, if I okay. want to get out, I will get out. And you you can't do that on a floating petri dish. That's Most all, 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 all I all I heard was uh, Dirk does not want to go to that type of cruising. All I'm hearing is Dirk is a coward, and that's all. Yep. <laughs> You're you not just wrong, have... giant baby. You, you just, like, Dirk, you just need to be more open-minded, man. Like, um, so, so somebody in Twitch chat is suggesting that I can't swim. I can swim. I, I have worked as a lifeguard, in fact. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm fine with the swimming he, he, part. He, he does have a bronze swimming certificate. Part. <laughs> he does. <laughs> he, he, so, he, he went to the Royal Queen's Swimming School. Yeah. Um, yeah. Anyway, anyway, guys, like we are vast approaching Queen's the end of the show. School? Yes, Mike. Uh, queens what? tend to be royal. Yeah. 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 yeah they do yeah, tend they to be. I, I, anyway, I we should. We should. Ult I want What's to that? do an old school yeah. shout out. Oh, hang on! Hang on! Hang on! Hang on! Hang on! Hang on! Because like we we we're at the we're at the we're at the, 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 the kind of end of the show, so we're going to do final thoughts. And thankfully, because of final final thoughts and all that jazz, um, bad blood. You are the first one on the list, so shout outs and stuff. Thank Go you for, for le letting me on. It was great. I've, I've been out of the podcast stuff for a really long time, so it was great to getting back to uh, to doing a, a single show. So thank you we're, for that. We're and... sorry that this was the show you walked into. <laughs> <laughs> I, I kind of I kinda did that on purpose, but um, I want to shout out uh, Commander Starscream. He doesn't know me uh, by this name, but I flew with him in... Uh, uh, back when uh, we were in, um, I believe it was Black Aces, when we were still AAA, so that was way back when. Uh, so shout out to, uh, to Commander Starscream, good to see you still around. And uh, thank you for the Twitch chat uh, and uh, 
hope you guys are uh, gonna continue the show uh, in the in the near future, even after all of this negativity. Nice, Caleb. Well, my last thing is really that I, I hate to do this, but I I, I feel like. I, I kind of got a little bit of hope back, even though it was a very lackluster fan fest, because at least there's still some potential to fix things. So uh, I don't know. I, I, I know that I called Eve dead or dying, and I haven't actually done that ever, um, but it, it might actually uh, still have life in it if, uh, if the right moves are, are made. Mm, interesting. Okay. Uh, Dawn? Uh, I hope everybody has a good weekend, and um, I hope that whatever this living universe announcement is, is uh, worth our time. And you should all come hang out with us on Theta Thursday. I think you need wow. to repeat that, uh, Dawn. I, I think you were muted. What? what? No, we no, 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 no. I heard Dawn. No, she was she was fine. She was fine. Dirk. So um, final final thoughts. I, last thing, whatever. I, 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 yeah, I, I don't know. My final thoughts are kind of difficult to to sum up uh, on the basis that Eve is such a weird game for me at the minute. I I I, I wrote an article recently that was many thousands of words, more more words than I probably should have put in, and I got to about the 3,000 word mark, and when I could give a shit about the nitty gritty details. That there, there is nothing that CCP is doing right now that is actually engaging for me when it comes to a gameplay and a content standpoint. Um, and as they talk about the, the faction warfare changes and the way every upcoming change needs to be tied into the storyline somehow, that's admirable, but it doesn't actually give me anything that makes me want to come back to EVE Online. I'm, yeah. I'm so... I'm, I'm st still so engaged. I'm, I'm on the show and passionate about EVE Online. I'm running the Anger Games with Sothrasil. You know, we're, we're having a lot of fun doing stuff in EVE Online, but Jesus Christ, we don't want to play EVE Online. CCP might actually want to look at that at some point. I guess is my point. <laughs> Alright, fair enough. Mike. No Mike. No Mike. Okay. Oh, he got up. distracted. Uh yeah, if if CCP keeps failing to, to deliver actual content, then I guess we have to do it ourselves, as always. So obviously this is a plug for Anger Games. Uh, <laughs> Our tournament is going to be going on starting May 28th at 1700 for three weekends. So that's Saturday and Sunday. Uh, I are hope we you be will live? be. Yeah, we're, we're, we're going to be live on the CCP channel on Twitch. So Ooh. you can come over and. Uh, are you sure? <laughs> add your channel points on, on the outcome of the matches and potentially win more channel points. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Yeah, so can people win skins with the channel point bot? They maybe? they can definitely win skins. Uh, uh, are, are there prizes for the Angry Games, Soft or Soul? Oh, oh, oh man, you're really putting me on the spot here. Uh, we're <laughs> we're, we're going to be we're, we're going to have exciting prizes, although we are still talking to CCP about uh, the amount of prizes we're going to have. Um, <laughs> so let's let's see how much uh, we could get from them. Yeah, but we're, we're, what do the prices work out as, by and large? Uh, we have a pool of about um, 80,000 plex. Uh, that's going to be divided between the, the top six teams. And we have the uh, Eurystas Victory Skins. The Mordus Victory Skins. Uh, Mordus Victory Skins. Uh, <laughs> no, he just, uh, uh, here, here I am trying to cue Soth off and he, he can't even get the right words. Um, th this goes really well. This is about how well Angie Games runs, just as a point. Yes. Uh, Soth still tries to do a thing and I fix it. <laughs> hey, hey I'm, I'm, I'm the man for the numbers. Dark is the man for the words, okay? Soth does love his spreadsheets. 
Um, yes, yes. And, and I, I suppose just to co-opt Sus one last thing for a, a, a point, but like the 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 interaction between uh, XL and Eve. Did we talk about that? Does anybody care about the fact that did, you did can we use to? XL in Eve? My issue is the fact that it's XL. <laughs> I've never never used anything like that, so could, then could I have really to buy have into with a Excel. Google Sheets integration. It could have been, yeah, but that, I would have liked it if it was a Google Sheets integration as well. Like, I'm fine if they wanted to do, you know, uh, like a, a tie-in with Microsoft, but that's fine. But like, could you also do like a something that's tied in that's free? That'd be fantastic. But yeah, anyway, anyway. um, Webler. Do you have anything, final thoughts maybe, or anything that you didn't want, that wasn't covered, that you wanted to cover or shout, or, or have a shout out or something like that? What? So if you're on the fence about going to Goomba Lane, um, don't be. Uh, go to Goomba Lane. It's going to be fucking awesome. Uh, that's for sure. And I also think that if, um, if CCP doesn't deliver anything of substance quite soon, um, yeah. It's going to be bad times ahead. Was it Crasso? I'm not going to say that. Holy shit. I'm not, I'm not mean. <laughs> well, I mean, not wanting to like end it on that kind of note, but like, I just wanted to say thank you very much to everybody who's been watching uh, all the follows, uh, especially all the subs. Thank you very much. Like, we really appreciate that. And uh, yeah, I think that'll probably about wrap it up for the, for the week. Um, and. So yeah, guys. Um, I don't oh, think there there yeah. isn't. Oh, what? There, yes. There's no meta show today. So yeah, everyone's a... at at fan fest. So man, I was looking. No one to do the meta show. Rage. Yeah, <laughs> uh, I, yeah. I was about to mention that. Yeah. So we will all we'll see you 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 all um next week, I guess. Take care. Uh, have a good weekend, and yeah, take care. Right. Bye bye, guys. Don't bye. get too drunk. <laughs>